Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realise how garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. Seriously, find something else to do with your time. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. I'm just having a little bit of a look through that box I cracked open that came in for Konami. And there, I'll put a link on the screen so you guys can go ahead and check that out and see how I got on with my Blazing Vortex box. But anyway, I was looking through the box and I noticed the Springens cards that I kind of forgotten even existed. I got basically the entire goddamn deck core here because... They're just so damn common. So the one good thing about this deck is that it is really budget friendly. And I presume since you're here that that is something that you're looking for. Well, today we have a deck profile for you. It's certainly not perfect. It's not super tried and tested. I have played a few games online and absolutely mullered people. So it's gone quite well so far. So it is a bit of a monster match at the moment. But hopefully you guys will enjoy the ideas that I've come up with. Again, it's going to be nothing perfect, but it might give you some ideas of exactly what you'd like to do with your own version of the deck. Once again, just keep in mind that this is one of those versions of the deck that I've kind of mashed together and has worked out relatively nicely so far in testing. If you're watching today's video and you're feeling inspired and you'd like to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles or even Pokemon ones for that matter, you should consider checking out Jam Jam Cards UK. There'll be a link in the description to them. They are the channel sponsors and that link will get you a nice cheeky discount on their eBay store courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, enough nonsense for me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So we have it ladies and gentlemen, certainly far from perfect, but it's the build I've been using online and ruining some people's days. I got caught a fucking noob earlier by a Dragon Link player that I absolutely tortured with this because I summoned Dragoon after he wasted all his resources, didn't know what he was doing and absolutely fucked him up. He didn't like it, he called me a fucking noob and then I just laughed at him. But anyway, that's enough gloating. This deck is an absolute ton of fun. From all my testing so far, being able to just recycle these XC monsters every single turn and reattach stuff is just pretty fucking cool. Honestly, you can outgrind your opponent if they don't know what the deck does, which usually they don't because nobody has read these cards yet. Then this is a really cool option. Of course, we're playing this with the OCG cards in here because primarily we're looking ahead to what's going to happen after Lightning Overdrive. But honestly, this is such a cool deck, and it's so, so incredibly cheap to run if you want to do so. So we're just going to run through what I've got in here. So I've got a single copy of Captain Sargus and a single copy of Branga. These are honestly absolutely fine at one each. You really don't want to see these in your hand all that much. Although the good advantage of this deck is that they're not super bricky, because of course you can attach them. And if they end up in the grave, it doesn't matter, because again, you can attach them from there as well. We're in triple copies of Rocky. This is one of our most important level fours in the deck. Triple copies of that, of course, for that reason. And triple copies of Brothers, which again uh, should be coming out in Lightning Overdrive. Triple copies of Pador, again, because we just want those extra names. We want to be able to keep resolving these cards. We have opted to go here for two copies of Fallen of Albaz. You don't have to necessarily run this in the builds that you are, but honestly, having access to the fusion to make easier rank eights is another good option. The fact that it can interrupt your opponent, the fact that you can suck up their monsters into your fusions is just really cool to have access to. It's much the same reason that we're running Super Poly, and honestly, you could side in a ton of Super Poly targets as well to just whip up your opponent. We're running the kind of standard small scrap engine. We've got one Golem and three Recyclers. This is really good in this deck, of course, being able to just dumb stuff. Uh, if you start off with Recycler and any card that you want to pop in your on your field, you can go into Appaloosa turn one, which is just really nice. Running a single copy of Gizmek Orochi, of course, being a level 8, it can easier make rank 8s, which is nice in this particular deck. Being a machine is also beneficial as well. It's easy enough to dump into the grave. And then for our only hand trap that we're running in the deck, triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. To be honest with you, this is all you really need. There isn't really the room to run more hand traps. I guess you could do if you wanted to cut some of the other engines, but really these other engines are what makes this deck fun and explosive, which is what we really want. Speaking of fun, we've got Dark Magician and uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon because we like anime. No, not really. It's because Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is absolutely broken in this deck. It's a really, really cool option. Honestly, Dragoon is one of those cards that really improves decks that otherwise may struggle to put out a good turn one board. Uh, and it's one of those cards that can win you games off the bat. And honestly, having access to this in this deck can be really handy. 
Ronan the big wormy boy, uh, he's just massive, he protects cards. He's level 8, so of course you can turn him into a rank card and then he doesn't get banished when he leaves as material. So you can just keep cycling him around with that way. It's just a really cool option to have in the deck. And just one copy is perfectly sufficient. Triple copies of Springen's Watch, being able to search the field spell is obviously a nice touch. And the fact that even if you have the field spell, it's still active is really cool being able to search cards from your deck. Double copies of Booty in here. This is all you really need. Three copies is just way too cloggy, but two is perfectly good. And the fact that it can then activate the field spell from your deck or graveyard is absolutely bonkers. The field spell itself, being able to boost your cards is a huge thing. The amount of times you can run over cards that you otherwise wouldn't be able to because the attack boost is a really, really nice touch. Honestly, just works perfectly good. This card is really insane. If your opponent doesn't decide to out it quite early on, it can become problematic for them very quickly. We have a single copy of Terraforming because, you know, we run field spells and we don't have enough ways to search it, so always an extra copy available is good. Triple copies of Super Poly for being able to interrupt our opponent. Again, you can use these to go into the other fusion that's on here if you want to. It's just a way of interrupting your opponent. Honestly, I would definitely consider siding in more Super Poly targets as well, uh, just so you can further interrupt your opponent. A single copy of Red Eyes Fusion, this is just for the Dragoon engine, but obviously we have other ways to get into it if we really, really need to, but ideally we don't want to see this in our opening hand. Ignore Greater Polymerization, it wasn't actually supposed to be in here. We all make mistakes. That's one of my biggest ones in my life, and I'll never forgive myself. Call by the Grave is in here um, because it's really insanely powerful, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's one of those cards you absolutely need to run. If it was at more than one, we would, uh, because honestly, you get a lot of hand traps or come out for this deck. This helps protect you. It's good for being proactive. It's also good for being defensive as well. We're running a single copy of Pot of Avarice. Just being able to recycle cards and resend them back out is always a nice touch. A single copy of Blast and a single copy of Call is more than sufficient. You really don't need more of this in this deck. Again, apologies about the great polymerization there. That, that was from an earlier iteration of the deck that I was running that I now don't have the targets in here for, so you can ignore that card safely. So you have two copies of Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon in here. Uh, this is just a really cool option. You'll see when you start playing it, being able to pop cards, being able to interrupt the opponent by soaking up their monsters during their turn is really cool. A single copy of Dragoon because, well, it's Dragoon. Two copies of X Blower is more than enough, to be quite honest with you. You could go for third if you wanted to, but I opted to run a Dingirsu instead. You can run Sanafond in here as well, this, that fucking prison boy thing. Uh, I did have that in here, but again, I cut it so I could run some other cards instead, but definitely an option you could consider. Two copies of Merrymaker is more than enough. You really don't need more than this. A single copy of Abyss Dweller because it's probably the best rank 4 in the game. We have a single copy of King of the Feral Imps. This is to search that fucking wormy boy and do absolutely nothing else for you. A single copy of Baguska. Uh, he's a drunk boy that you can't really see on this card art because they censored it. But, you know, it's really good to be honest. If you're going first, you have no other way to play. You just set this up and pass turn. Scrap Wyvern for the Scrap Engine, uh, don't really need to elaborate on that even more. Cross Sheep because we're running a Fusion-esque deck. Um, we have the Fusions in here, so why the hell not? Uh, but we also have Exceeds, which you can kind of take advantage of as well, but not quite as well. A single copy of Appaloosa because, you know, just making this is... It's, it's strong, what else is there to say? And a single copy of Predator Plant Vert Anaconda. This is obviously extra beneficial if you do run more of the Super Poly targets in the extra deck, but also the fact that you can send it for Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Again, this is just an early iteration of the deck, and as you can see, I had uh, fluffed it a little bit there where I'd made a few changes and forgot to take something out. In general, this is a really cool option and a way to play the deck, something that you guys could consider doing for yourselves. Again, just mess around with it. This might give you a basis of ideas to work from. Certainly not perfect, but something you can build from. And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along. I appreciate the fact that you made it this far into the video. Hopefully because you've enjoyed it. Enough to have hit the subscribe button. But at the very least, hopefully you've hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. It's worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do tons of other stuff including how to play videos, combo tutorials and all the rest of that good stuff. Once again, thank you very much for making it this far into the video. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.